What is the longest time you've spent without eating anything? I personally struggled pretty hard when we tried fasting for Ramadan with Amar a few years back, and that was only from sunrise to sunset. Now imagine doing it for five straight days without breaking your fast once. Pretty inconceivable, right? Personally, I like my breakfast way too much. See, before the invention of agriculture or refrigeration, our hunter-gatherer ancestors would a lot of the time experience long periods of fasting. And according to the internet, most humans are actually biologically capable of fasting for five to 10 days, apparently without much of a problem. So to put this claim to the test, Matt voluntarily decided to take up the challenge and go five straight days without eating anything while learning about the benefits benefits of fasting, the human mind, and body. We do not recommend that you try this on your own without supervision. But without further ado, here's what happened to Matt. Apparently it's gonna be really, really challenging and you have to be super conscious about the water you're drinking, your meditation routine. Apparently you're gonna, trip, <laughs> you're gonna trip towards the end. It's an insane mental journey. It's not just like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna power through not being hungry. <laughs> oh, this would be a quick, fun episode. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> you're starving yourself for five days. That's extremely challenging. Yeah, oh, I'm underestimating this so much. It sounds easy, you know, five days. It's like easy peasy. <laughs> Oh my god, that's the funniest shit I've ever heard of. <laughs> I have never not eaten during 24 hours. Isn't that crazy? Times that five. It's like I'm just jumping in. <laughs> it's like me it's like... telling you guys I'm gonna run the marathon. It's pretty much the same thing. But if I think what you're doing is way harder. Than running a marathon? Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Guys, you're all scared of the shit. Out of me right now. <laughs> like five days is a long time, like health wise. That's why we're gonna medically monitor him and see how far he can get. What does that, that even mean? Just gonna monitor his heartbeat to make sure it's not no, at no. zero? <laughs> <laughs> this is my last fight until Friday, five days from now. We're gonna see Matt like we've never seen him before. All right, it is noon on Sunday. Matt's challenge has officially begun. I, I feel like I'm instantly in survival mode right now. It is currently 9.50 p.m. It's been almost 10 hours since I haven't had food, and to be honest, I still feel kind of full from that meal, so I feel good. Tomorrow, I'm expecting to be in more and more serious pain, but otherwise, I feel good. Easy peasy, baby. You all right, buddy? No, I'm not doing great, man. I'm so goddamn hungry. This is one out of five days, and I'm already questioning how in the fuck I'm gonna do four more fucking days already. It's interesting, even just driving around right now, I'm noticing the smell of food times 10. My survival mechanisms are telling me food is nearby, and then my mind is like, nope, just gotta resist. Hey, <laughs> good to see you. Hello, I'm Sky, and I make videos about health and wellness topics. And usually the first few days are pretty difficult, so I'm sure you're feeling really hungry at the moment. <laughs> no, nothing, I'm good. My stomach's yeah. just screaming at me right now. I feel like I'm having a, a child in here. It's just growling over and over. Basically, your body's not using glucose right now for energy. It's using ketone bodies. So it's a chemical, basically, that's formed in the liver. So they get released into the bloodstream to be used as energy rather than the glucose that we're getting from food. Oh, I love how I'm do talking about all this while I'm doing it, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're figuring it out. 33 hours into my fast. I don't necessarily feel too, too terrible yet, but I've heard the second day within 35 to 48 hours is when it really really starts to hit and I'm about to hit that tomorrow and that's when I think it's gonna really be painful so I just gotta get over that hump tomorrow and then I have three more days after that oh my gosh what are you eating? <laughs> I'm sorry I tried to hide it but that just give me a lot the sweet taste of dates and peanut butter chocolate. Mm. Have you been chewing on the mic? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gloop, would you mind saying... So it is now Tuesday, almost two days in, and I finally am able to have the best breakfast in the entire world. <laughs> My water. 
to breakfast. All I can think about is food. It is literally what I have been dreaming about. My mind goes, oh, it's time to eat. But I'm always reminded that I can't. I genuinely just want this to be over. The exhaustion and like the pain in my stomach in general is just like escalating. So I'm about to talk to Dr. Jason Fung, who's an expert that focuses specifically on intermittent fasting. Ah, perfect. I can see you now. How are you doing? I'm good. I uh, became very interested in nutrition and obesity because a lot of our diseases that we face actually are related to obesity. So you can look at type 2 diabetes, heart attacks, and strokes, and cancer. One of the things I realized was that it's not just what you eat. It's also when you eat and giving your body enough time to sort of digest the food that you eat. And that's fast. So the 2016 Nobel Prize for Medicine went to one of the original describers of this process called autophagy. In essence, it's a rejuvenation process that is intrinsically very healthy for you. Except in the last 30 years, when we've had this onslaught of advertising essentially food companies they've somehow convinced us that we actually can't go without food for more than three hours that's so unhealthy for you it's like why if you're overweight that could be the healthiest thing that you do just the more and more i hear about this the benefits just sound crazy the fact that this has been around for thousands of years that our ancestors lived in caves and went out and hunted didn't necessarily have food every day so it's just part of being human Dude. I have not eaten for 52 hours. 52 hours! But I feel like I'm getting more and more energy. I'm essentially becoming the king of the world. Or I'm just going insane. Maybe it's a combination. I've been trying to go to sleep for like three hours. My head is back to raging. It's like a combination of just being so tired and hungry. I was expecting it to feel better by now. Or at least to be able to sleep. That I'd be so tired that I'd sleep like that. But I can't even sleep. Can't even f sleep. Day three, and another great day for breakfast. Oh, my favorite friend, water. Nice. I don't have this raging headache anymore, but I gotta tell you, I'm pretty excited to finish this freaking challenge already. Because last night, I started getting like these heart palpitations. I don't know if it was from nervousness or lack of food or just a combination, but woke up and I was kind of like in a sweat. I know it's a healthy thing to do, but sometimes I just worry that I'm not necessarily prepared and that maybe I should have just taken it a step at a time. Like just gone for a day and then two days, a few months later. All right, so we are here at Bulletproof Lab. Sky, our partner in all this, is introducing me to a woman named Cassandra. And Cassandra actually lost 150 pounds through intermittent fasting. She's gonna take me through the lab, explain to me what fasting is all about, and hopefully get me through this hump because right now I'm just suffering so much more than I have the past two days. Day three. Day three. 76 hours. And how you feeling? Terrible. <laughs> this is horrible. when it feels the worst. Yeah. It gets better right tomorrow. Really? Yeah, third day. First, your body is going through self death. Weight. Self death. Se yeah, literally. And that's actually a good thing. It's because A, we're using those bad cells for energy. We're literally eating our own body. And then you basically can renew all your cells by building new muscle when you do refeed. It. One, two, three little pricks, and then that's it. Point two high. is a normal. Oh, two point three. Very wow. good. You're you're in full fledged nutritional ketosis. Yeah. You're awesome. Good to know. It makes me feel so much better. I was in so much pain earlier. Good things are happening. Imagine you're resetting your body. You're resetting your your blood sugar. You're resetting the ability for your body to tap into your fat store. And you're decreasing your toxic load all in five days. I am the king. <laughs> I am the king. So we just got out of Bulletproof Lab, and now I think there's only one thing to do, and that's just chug as much water as possible, and hopefully wake up with just way more energy. Day four has come, and I think it has worked. <laughs> I'm not even thinking about food right now. And maybe it's like placebo, but I definitely feel like way more zen. It's nice. It's way better than day three. <laughs> yeah, you don't look like a corpse today. That's a plus. <laughs> What does it feel like in your head right now? Yeah, honestly, the analogy I would use is like a race, you know? Like when you're doing a big race, some parts of it are just like so painful and some other parts are so enjoyable. It's just probably the hardest race I've ever done because it's five days. It makes you sort of like aware of your body. So many times I feel like in my life, I'm just, if I see a snack, I'll just eat it without even thinking and just eating, you know? And as I'm living and breathing in this body, it's literally rebuilding itself after 26 years of just constant food. Hello. 
like you are a Well, we just met these very kind strangers who like to seek discomfort. I swear, this is not even an I... discomfort. Uh. But every day, it's like four or five times a day, people that don't even know Yes Theory walk up to me because of the shirt and be like, I love that. Back to the back to the reflection. Like you have to force yourself to lack things. Otherwise, you're just going to think everything's just kind of normal. You're available. Available. And you're not going to appreciate shit. The day is here. Hallelujah. And Mar and Gracie went out shopping for me. Last night I couldn't sleep because I was so excited to eat. If this has taught me anything, it's that eating is just awesome. <laughs> you really gotta appreciate it because the fact that we have it around everywhere is just, it's a miracle, really. Guys, I gotta tell you, this has been the most unenjoyable thing I've done since we started Yes Theory. <laughs> Can't relate, last night had these wonderful french fries, big milkshake. Yeah, you wanna die? <laughs> Alright, it has been five full days since Matt started fasting. It's finally the time he breaks the fast and apparently he's supposed to break it having something very light. Thomas didn't necessarily get the memo, so he made him pancakes. I just put it here. Oh my god. You should not start with this. Apparently, the experience you get from tasting things for the first time after five days of not eating anything, you taste food like you're a baby trying it for the first time. So. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> it's been so hard. But now it's time to get back. Is it's that really, watermelon? Yeah. It's, it's Is that good. watermelon? <laughs> <laughs> you forgot what it looks like? <laughs> you forgot fruit. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Bite! Bite! <laughs> Oh my god. He wants to crack. <laughs> Got another one. <laughs> I honestly feel like I, I was in a desert and I've entered an oasis. <laughs> take right. it easy, take it easy. <laughs> I wouldn't have a bite, but I think your stomach is gonna freak. I don't know, dude. That looks pretty damn good. It's hard have, to resist. Have a, have a bite. Have a little bite. Okay. That's a huge bite. <laughs> I'll have what I'm having. <laughs> After 120 hours of fasting, Matt came out with a fresh perspective on our relationship with food and the direct correlation between what we choose to put in our bodies and our state of mental and physical health. We often forget how incredible of a machine the human body is and how much it can actually withstand. But it's only through pushing ourselves far outside of our comfort zones that we gain the life-changing perspectives and knowledge that helps us evolve and become better people. Honestly, after watching Matt complete the challenge, we all started to become more aware of our own eating habits and it inspired us to eat more consciously. We hope you will too. Thank you so much for watching. We just want to take some time to thank our sponsor for this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is a service where you can learn new skills online, such as entrepreneurship, photography, writing, or even technology such as coding. There's over 24,000 classes by experts from around the world in almost every area of expertise. So if you want to improve or expand your skill set from the comfort of your home, Skillshare is the place to do it. Plus, if you're interested in getting the first two months for free, you can click the link in the description below and the first 500 people that sign up are going to get this free free two month promotion. Signing up is 100% risk free for the entire trial period. You'll get two months to try it out. And if you're not happy with it, it's easy to cancel without getting charged. So if you want to learn a new skill and be a part of the first 500 people that get the first two months for free, make sure you click the link in the description below. We'll see you next week.